Hey guys and welcome to another video on solution design and today we are going to talk about the 7 R strategies for cloud migration. Yes, and this is going to be a very interesting topic. Uh, whether you are uh, moving your projects from on-prem or data center to cloud, uh, different workloads, different environments, or you are like preparing for any of the system or solution design interview discussions. So this is these concepts are going to really help you and boost you out. So if you are planning any of the digital transformation or your uh, workloads to be moved to cloud, these are the industry standard way and you need to know this. So this is going to be a very interesting video and I'll request you to stay put with me till the end and without wasting any further time, let's start. So when we talk about a digital or cloud transformation journey, there are basically three stages, three phases that every organization, that every project goes through. Uh, whenever you have to plan any of your workloads, any of your application from on-prem to cloud, you want to move those. So there are these three different phases that you need to take care of. First is your SS, then is your mobilize, and then is your migrate. So these three are the stages. And uh, we will be talking about these three stages uh, probably in a different video. Uh, but the idea of today's video is to target or focus more on the seven R strategies. So what are seven R? So the seven R strategies were initially five R's and they were like enumerated by Gartner uh, in I think in 2011 or somewhere. And later on uh, with time they evolved to be uh, these seven R. All right, so there have been a lot of chatter around 7R, but what exactly is this 7R? That is one question uh, if you're not aware of that must be wandering your mind. Well, the 7R actually stands for uh, rehost, replatform, refactor, retain, retire, relocate, and repurchase. So these are different ways you can actually move your workload to cloud. Now let's talk about each of these items and try to understand uh, where does uh, one fit. So first of all, uh, let's take an example. Uh, we have a few application servers. Let's say we have a few applications uh, being deployed on Tomcat or IIS and uh, we have a few database instances. Now, uh, I need to move uh, my workloads to cloud. How can I do that? So before we actually jump into uh, like going into the cloud context, uh, let's quickly think around a very simple use case. Uh, let's see, let's say there are, uh, you have different applications that are deployed on IIS or Tomcat and uh, you have a few database servers. Now, what could be the simplest way? Forget about cloud, uh, but what could be the simplest way uh, if you want to run your applications in your, uh, let's say, of some virtual machine in cloud? Well, that's the very first strategy and that is called rehost. So uh, what we do in rehost is like we just lift our application and put it, deploy it in a similar virtual machine, in a similar uh, same specs, let's say for simplification. We pull our application from our on-prem servers and deploy it in a virtual machine on cloud. So it could be any cloud, it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, the idea being there's a virtual machine somewhere uh, in any of the public cloud providers, we just deploy. And most probably we can have a uh, similar specs around that. So uh, with that, uh, we do get an advantage. We don't need to change anything. So if we have IAS over here, uh, just uh, deploy a new instance of an IAS server and put your application there. It will start working as it used to work over here. Now again, there are some challenges. It's not like uh, we put that. You have to take care of the networking and some of the other concepts around that. Uh, but again, from an application perspective, you don't need to change anything. So that's the first part. Now, let's say uh, you want to take advantages of your uh, of the cloud provider. For example, let's say uh, I have been running this database server, uh, MySQL server or MS SQL server for X number of years. Now, I want to use uh, some sort of a managed service. I don't need to, I don't want to actually uh, install all the updates, uh, uh, go into the migration task, state, backups and all those sort of things. So what I can do, I can go for uh, some sort of a managed uh, database instance, for example, Cosmos DB using SQL or maybe or maybe AWS Aurora using uh, SQL Server or maybe a RDA, something, anything I can uh, take for that. So what I can do, I can actually have my database uh, to be moved uh, to these managed service. Earlier, my database server installation maintenance was a part of my job. Now I am just using that instance. I'm not 
handling the actual installable deployment so what i get i just need to connect to the instance use it so i if i want to change the specs compute or ram i can do that very easily i don't need to take care of like what are the latest updates uh, that i need to install shut down the server all those tasks are managed by the platform so this migration is called re-platform so we uh, we have the same set of data uh, but the platform is changed earlier we were having a installed version of a sql server now we are having a managed instance so that is a re-platform now the next thing uh, that is most commonly used so these are the initial three r's uh, uh, rehost replatform and uh, refactor now the refactor is something uh, you change your application to suit to cloud environment so for example i'll give you an instance so let's say if you were uh, earlier you were running on iis uh, using a dotnet framework or something on a very legacy application now uh, you can uh, reframe uh, redesign your application that includes uh, code changes of course to suit to a more dockerized environment containerized environment so uh, sort of thing so uh, that includes breaking your application into smaller smaller chunks uh, monolith to microservices so again uh, there can be uh, n number of layers uh, that you can break your application into but the idea being you uh, re factor or redesign re architect your application so that it is more suited to a cloud native environment so that is your uh, refactor so most of the legacy applications uh, that we have they need to be refactored uh, it's not that easy to move those uh, so that's why we use that. All right. So the next thing that we are going to talk about is your uh, relocate and relocate is something uh, that is done on a VM level. So if you have a cluster of virtual machines on vSphere, so you can just pull up your hypervisor, move uh, the application, the virtual machines to cloud at the hypervisor level. And uh, that is something like relocate uh, your existing data center to a cloud VMware cloud uh, and other things are like fall into this category. So uh, all these aside, the next thing that we have is uh, repurchase. So for repurchase, I'll give an example and that can give you a more clarity uh, into the actual context. So there used to be an application called TFS or Team Foundation Server. I don't know like how many of, of you use that. So uh, right now it's called Azure DevOps. So uh, Team Foundation Server used to be a on-prem application, a server that you need to install. Uh, it has a lot of services. Uh, uh, you have collections and other things. Uh, without going in, into those details, uh, there's an on-prem application server that you need to install on your environment, on your network. Now, uh, what Microsoft did is they came up with a cloud version, a SaaS-based model of the team foundation server and now what you have is like you can uh, directly go into the devops.azure.com and start using that so this is sort of a repurchasing so you uh, repurchase the application to a more uh, cloud ready version around that so most of these falls into SaaS models uh, but not necessarily or mandatorily it is a SaaS model you can have a different uh, licensing option or cloud options depending upon your uh, platform or your application but this is more targeted towards your uh, third party apps that you don't own so they uh, if they have some different variant that you can use uh, cloud ready uh, you purchase that now after uh, all this is done uh, there are two things that are left one is your retain and the other one is your retire now uh, from the name it's quite obvious uh, let's say if you want to for whatever reasons if you have to keep some of your applications on your on-prem or a network uh, well, they fall into a retained category. Now, again, uh, if you are planning out a digital transformation journey, so there should be some roadmap for these applications to be eventually moved to cloud uh, or retired, uh, like whatever be the case. Uh, but again, uh, for the retain is like uh, for for some time, you keep your applications on your network, on your on-prem. And the last one is, as the name suggests, retire. Uh, some of the obsolete applications that are not in use all they have been like uh, refactored and uh, moved to the cloud some of these modules so they uh, can then be uh, retired out so any of your digital transformation project uh, that you have that you need to migrate to cloud so it has to go it has to fall into either of these seven buckets and uh, these are like the standard way of doing that so guys, that's it for this video. I hope you liked the video. 
So guys, do post in the comments uh, if you have any query suggestion, if you have used any of these strategies, uh, just uh, let me know if you have anything in your mind around those and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you like the video, press the thumbs up button. Uh, that gives a lot of motivation uh, to me. And subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon uh, so you don't miss anything. Uh, there are more videos coming soon uh, on different concepts, uh, including and DevOps. Uh, I hope you like it. Uh, see you soon. Have a great day.